talk about some test results. I actually see a scary amount of SIBO misdiagnosis. So if you get SIBO, you do need to get rid of it. So it's either antimicrobials or the inland diet or the antibiotics. But if you don't have SIBO, but have some of the symptoms of SIBO, it could be LIBO and then the treatment's very different. So you want to go into rebuilding versus killing. So I see a lot of overkilling, which ends up leaving the microbiome quite barren and we need those guys to digest our food. So if we don't have enough of the good guys, we can still get indigestion, we can still get bloating, we can still get pain. So it's really good to know if you have SIBO or if it's maybe LIBO. So let's go through some. Okay, so what I, so I always start by looking in the methane column and then I look at the hydrogen. The reason for that, so methane is CH4, so it takes four hydrogen molecules and one carbon molecule to make methane, and then hydrogen is two, two molecules. So the methanogens can also eat the hydrogen gas. So if you have high amounts of the methanogens, which produce the methane, then they could be gobbling up some of the hydrogen gas, which gives you a false reading on the hydrogen numbers. Sometimes what can happen, uh, I don't see it too often, but it can happen. So if you had really high numbers of methane and then you manage to bring them down, it can look like the hydrogen numbers increase, but it doesn't necessarily mean that the hydrogen sebobacteria have increased. It's just that the methanogens aren't there to eat it. So the methane one is that kind of the dominating gas. So I check that one out first. So the first thing that you look at is the baseline. So this is before you've drunk the lactulose or the glucose. A baseline of five and above is considered high. And so then you might either think of LIBO, large intestinal bacterial overgrowth, or improper testing. So if you didn't do the prep diet, which is the chicken, whitefish, eggs, cooking oil, olive oil, maybe rice if you've been having it. So if you know that you did the prep diet spot on, then if it's above five, then you think about LIBO. Whereas if you had some fruits and veggies, then it could be that. So I'd recommend retesting. Okay, so this one, and then with methane, we look for a rise of 12 parts per million over the lowest preceding value. So this is what the PPM is, parts per million. So the lowest preceding value is 11. So anything 23 and above would be considered positive for methane. So this person is positive at the 60 minute mark and stays positive. So I would say that is a tick for positive for methane SIBO. And then for hydrogen, we look for a rise of 20 parts per million over the lowest preceding value. So lowest value is zero, so therefore anything 20 and above would be positive, which it is also at the 60 minute mark. So this would be like a classic positive SIBO test result. And there's also the double peak that they talk about there as well. Um, that double peak is usually kind of when it's transitioning through the ileocecal valve, so going into the large intestine where we should see some fermentation. Yes. Okay, so what's another one? Um, okay, so methane starts at 10, so that would be the high baseline as well, rises to 24 within 20 minutes. So anything 22 and above. So it's kind of mild, so it's not a huge case of SIBO. It goes up to 28, goes up to 31. So I would still consider that positive for methane SIBO. And then the hydrogen is not. So it doesn't go anywhere near rising over 20. And then that was for lactulose, this is for the glucose. And then they say that glucose gets absorbed, well it does. <laughs> uh, gluc glucose gets absorbed higher up in the small intestine. So it's nice to test with too. I personally go with the lactulose first and then sometimes follow up with a glucose. So yeah, positive again. Okay, let's go with this one. So. Baseline is zero, so that's great. So I wouldn't think LIBO in this case. You can have SIBO and LIBO at the same time. Yay. Okay, the lowest value is zero. So we're looking for a rise of 12 parts per million. That doesn't happen, so I would say that's negative. 
For the hydrogen, we're looking for a rise of 20 parts per million over the lowest value, so 22 and above, which it is. So towards the end of the small intestine, so someone like this, I would definitely, well, I always do anyway. So I'm looking at the person that has this test result and I'm asking about different symptoms and what's their transit time like, and you can kind of get a sense of what's going on from there. So usually the transit, the transition time is between like 100 to 120 minutes. So it's kind of in that bit there. So I would pair that up with the person and see what's going on. Just off the test result, I'd say this person might need like a little bit of antimicrobials, but nothing too intense because it's not that bad. Okay. Whoa, so look at this baseline. So this baseline is 37, so that's super high. So this person's probably going to be very uncomfortable all the time. It's bloated when they wake up, bloated when they eat anything, because things just kind of stack on top of each other because there's always fermentation. Unless they didn't do the test prep as they should have. Okay, so rise of 12 parts per million, so 49 and above. Just on the just on that transition point, so I'm like, oh, I'm not so sure. And then 20 parts per million, so 24 and above. So again, it's in that little transit time through going to the large intestine. So this person, I would probably do a bit of large intestine dysbiosis work first. And this one, this high baseline. So because it's like, oh, is there, there might be like a teeny tiny little bit of SIBO, but it looks more like LIBO. So things like partially hydrolyzed guai gum and Protectus, which is the lactobacilli rutiri, those are two things that you can use with SIBO or not, and it helps to reduce methane levels. So I would absolutely start there because maybe this person just has a whole bunch of fermentation happening because they don't have enough of the good guys in the light intestine. And wouldn't it be amazing if they didn't need to do a whole full-on round of antimicrobials? So it's so good to know how to read test results. 30, oh, another one. So 35, super high baseline, and goes looking for 47 and above at the 80-minute mark. So yeah, I'd say that is SIBO. Um, and this is a good thing to point out. So it's so over the lowest preceding value. So not the starting value, lowest preceding value. It's usually the starting value, but not always. So seven, so anything 27 and above, just positive at the 60 minute mark, definitely positive at the 80 minute mark. So I would consider that positive for both. And these are just some side by sides. So what have we got here? I'm kind of in the way. I'll just make myself smaller. <laughs> um, this one's a little bit blurry. Sorry about that. So methane was seven, and it did go up to thirty-seven at the hundred-minute mark, um, but positive from the sixty-minute mark, and then negative and negative. I remember who this was. She was so lovely. So yeah, that was in. Um, when did we do that? between August and November. So I think we started in, yes, yeah, September, October, November. Three months, yeah. I love serious stuff. I get so excited about it. <laughs> um, oh, look at this. I didn't take the names off that. I'm just going to pause. And then, so... Look at this. So methane was a 17 baseline, down to two is zero. Bom, bom, bom. And then hydrogen was positive and then not. So this you see is some fermentation there, which is what we do want, actually. So this is where it's going into the large intestine and it shows that there is some fermentation, which is great news. So yeah. Cool. Oopsie daisy. So those are just some examples of how to interpret test results. So maybe you can use some of the information against your own and just double check that you're on the right track. Yeah. If you need any help um, with treatment, I've got a bunch of different options. There's like the online course, which is totally do it yourself. And it's super, I'm super happy with it. And that's like the do it yourself version of my group coaching programs. So it's a lot more affordable. You just need to be your own cheerleader. And then if you want some more support, I love my group coaching programs. I run them about four times a year. 
And then I've almost always got a wait list for private coaching, but you're welcome to join that. So put this down below. Cool. So if you haven't done a SIBO test, I would totally recommend it because then you know what you're dealing with. And then what if it's not, what if it's not even SIBO? What if you don't even need to go through the antimicrobials? Wouldn't that be amazing? Yeah, I believe in you, Superstar, you're worth it.